Hey, practice owners, welcome back to another edition of Coming Back Stronger. Our guest today, uh, Corey Pinegar from Call Force, is uh, Corey agreed to get up really, really, really early. I'm in Louisville. Corey's in uh, Provo, Utah. Yep. We can see the sun coming up behind you. You know, appreciate you getting up early to do this. Um, uh, we have sort of, um, we've done a lot of things in the dental industry. Corey is a, a good friend of the magazine, the Profitable Dentist Magazine, uh, been to some events. And, you know, over the years, he's a guy that, you know, sort of my, some of my go-to people for certain, their lanes and um, uh, phones were a, a sort of a topic that I think, you know, Corey and I were talking earlier, a lot of practice owners don't appreciate. They just put them under this big category, who's answering the phones. And um, there's a lot more to it than that. And, and it, from a practice owner sense, the lot more is revenue and production uh, from just the phone. And it's a little more than just answering the phone. Somebody answers the phone while we're working and then we roll it over to you know, the answering machine uh, overnight and we get it in the morning and all that kind of stuff. And Corey's gonna explain that, the, the importance of it. Uh, and I think two things, one in inbound calls when patients call, and how to maximize the production that comes from those. And number two, outbound calls, which I think are a thing that get lost. And again, there's a lot of, I'm, I'm making this up as I go. I'm trying to think, something popped in my head like there's a lot of money in those outbound calls or there's, you know, there, there really is. It's, it's neat to follow up with your patients, but there's a lot of production and revenue hidden in a simple task like managing your outbound calls. And then uh, he's going to talk about some numbers, some real dollars of potential that, that is sort of hidden in your practice. And one of the ways to get them out, which is through your inbound and outbound calls. So did I sum that up pretty well, Corey? That was, no, that was well done. And awesome. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here with the sun cresting above the mountains behind no, us. Seriously, you, you've got it. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping no. it, gets, it makes a halo right behind my head. <laughs> yes. um, but I mean, kind of to start us off, if a practice is doing a million dollars, and this is data that we've backed up, that other large industry leaders have backed up, but if your practice is doing a million dollars, how much potential is the practice sitting on? So you don't need another marketing dollar spent, but you need to be more efficient or more profitable and productive as a dentist. Mm -hmm. What you're sitting on is $2.4 million in total opportunity to produce. So there's a $1.4 million gap. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously not a snap of a finger that will cause that $1.4 million to show up. If it was that easy, we would all do it. Mm -hmm. But there are some really significant things that we've seen where dentists are bleeding money. And it's, yeah. it's not an issue with the practice, but unfortunately it's an industry problem or it's a standard to be that way. And so we'll kind of go through a couple of these things. And these are not hard, more than anything. These are not rocket science architectural issues that we're looking to solve. They're simple systems and processes and there's accountability that could add half a million dollars to your practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And practices here have not been on, you know, been off for 60 or 45 days and we need to recover right. and, and get back to being profitable and productive. And that, so you said something interesting. You said um, not another marketing dollar. And I want to take just, you know, 30 seconds and sort of draw that distinction uh, in the, in the dental world, the practice ownership world. I think there's a, um, there's a misunderstanding of sales, number one, what it is. We all sell, um, you know, we sell ourselves. We, and if you're a practice owner, you're selling your practice to the community and hopefully they buy and come, you know, come to you for 35 years so you can, you know, eventually sell your practice, buy an RV and go off into the sunset in Provo, Utah. Um, I mean, that's why, we, that's why we get up and work hard and we take risks and we own our business. Um, but I draw that distinction because my, and maybe you help me out, uh, kind of your perspective, Corey, the, you know, I always say marketing's job is to make the phone ring. That's it. It can't bring a patient in. It can't do, you know, it can't, uh, convince them that they need this treatment. 
and it can't help them finance it. It can't do any of those things. The job of marketing is to make the phone ring. And then that's to some degree where you take over. The, yeah. the trick is once the phone rings, you have two options. And, and I always, I love the, the secret shopper calls where, you know, um, the practice owner's listening in. He says, oh, yes, we're very efficient. And somebody answers the phone and they say, yeah, you know, do you do implants? My last dentist said I need, you know, $10,000 worth of implants. And the person who answers the phone is clearly busy and, you know, clearly says, yes, yes, yes. There's something going on in the back. You know, the toilet's overflowing in the, in the uh, patients um, in the reception area. The light's out. The suction's not working. And they're just in a hurry to take care of those, you know, I don't know, $100 worth of problems. And they say, yeah, yeah, we do implants. And somebody says, okay, awesome. They will call us back if you need them. And so marketing did its job. It made the phone ring. Sales takes over and their job is to get people in. The doctor's job is to propose treatment and then sales' job is to make sure that treatment gets in the schedule and done. Is that a fair distinction where the boundary falls? You know, the job. If we, really, if we really broke it down into a technical pro into the technical process, it's called a marketing qualified lead. Mm -hmm. And then you're turning it into a sales qualified right. lead. Like if we're right. really breaking it down and that's a high level. But what I wanted to actually focus on today is let's talk even before the call is answered. Okay. So traditionally, and you know, over the last 24 months, we've been able to survey and over the last 12 months, we've been able to survey 1.4 million calls to dental offices. Okay. And 32% of all phone calls to dental offices are missed. And this is pre-COVID. Holy cow. And so, first of all, like you've got to even answer the phone to convert it into an opportunity, generally for implants, for new right. patients. And so your marketing is making the phone ring the next step is picking up the phone and then converting the call. But if we're missing, let's just round up to 33% or a third of all of the marketing opportunities that we generate, we're washing a lot of money or flushing a lot of money down the toilet here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are, practices are sitting with gold around them every day because that one call you missed could have been that implant. It could have been that cosmetic restorative case. Mm -hmm. Do you have any numbers on now on during COVID? Because I, yes, I can tell you, I've heard a lot of, I've heard a lot of kind of anecdotal things where doctors will say, you know, all right, we're, we're coming back Monday. We're, you know, I can't wait to, you know, we're going to start, make, we're going to start reappointing patients. And then they come back in and they say, oh my gosh, we have 107 missed calls. Um, nobody's been answering the phone for a month or two or three. Um, but then they find out, you know, uh, Dr. Jones down the street has been coming in for emergencies and, you know, he's done okay the last two months. He's been in every day. He's been busy because everybody's emergencies went to the person who was answering the phone. Yep. I mean, so right now, just within the last week, 40% of all calls are being missed by dental practices. And that's an average because some offices are obviously completely staffed mm -hmm. and some are still very vacant or running maybe a Tuesday, Thursday opening. Um, but nationwide average, we are missing about 8% more calls okay. at a dental office than usual, which means that there's more opportunity if you're ready. Mm -hmm. If your practice is staffed, there's emergencies, there's dentistry that people need and want to have done. And if you're ready to convert that, your business will grow. Hmm. Okay. So we do, like I said, we start off sort of with inbound and then, you know, we'll leave outbound and where that money is. So inbound wise, and, and let me back up here. Um, you, and part of this, I think you might explain what Call Force does and how they augment um, your practice and the idea of always answering the phone and how you accomplish that, number one. But number two, I think you hit the nail on it, always answer the phone the right way with the right intention and do the right thing, especially now when, you know, if you're coming back and you're slammed 
and you've got a patient calling you, number one, you need the cash flow. You haven't had any for two or three months. So literally, you know, and I know that's, that's a difficult prospect or concept for a lot of practice owning dentists to feel like they're just doing it for the money. But, you know, to be very blunt right now, you're probably doing it for the money. If you want to keep your practice alive, you better focus on the money for the last, for, for the next 90 days, especially because the last 90 days have been, you know, nothing. Um, and what, what makes, you just said something super interesting there because we're right now we don't have to squeeze the towel to get extra revenue out. Right, right. There's people for 90 days who needed a root canal or mm -hmm. have put off certain pain. And so there is a backlog of opportunity. So just to kind of give a very high level, uh, call force, we make inbound and outbound mm -hmm. calls. If a right. dental practice is busy, the call rolls through to us and we have a small team who answers and schedules just like the office would. Okay. And we manage offices from the, sing the, you know, the single location all the way to the multi hundred location. Mm -hmm. And we are actually seeing the DSOs that we work with right now. They are furiously capturing opportunity. And I think every practice has that same opportunity. If you're listed on Google and someone is in need of help, they will be calling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, so the, the DSO, you know, that's, that's at uh, the DSO, that phone is getting answered. Um, yeah, yeah. It might be your patient. Um, it might be your patient who called because they couldn't get an answer and they're calling. So may, that's a, that's a very important, um, I think, distinction is you know, if you want to complain about corporate dentistry, one thing that they're doing is answering that phone and getting them in. Yep. And what we're noticing that's really key right now, because obviously mm -hmm. before we're talking to thousands of patients a day, mm -hmm. what's going to help get people on the schedule and what's true, this is not misconceiving or misguided but that there's an urgency to spots because there is 90 days or 45 days of pent up demand. Mm -hmm. There's still only a certain amount of bandwidth that dentistry can provide. It's not like we can double the dental practices for the next 90 days to get through the buildup. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Create urgency with your patients. A couple of weeks ago, I went home. I was seeing my parents. And it was Sunday night and my mom got a text from the woman who does her hair um, and just letting her know, hey, Susan, you know, I know I haven't been able to see you for this last 60 days. I want to make sure we get you in because I am filling up quickly. Right then, right there, Sunday night, my mom scheduled her hair appointment. And I'm sure it was a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Create that urgency within your dental practice. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an awesome opportunity to say, hey, I know you're interested in this. I think we can do a lot to help here. We can make your life simpler. We can take this pain away. We can take care of this from being a further issue. Mm -hmm. Only have a few times left this week or next week. Let's get you in. Let's get you taken care of so that this doesn't become an additional problem. And that's the right thing for the patients too. Right. So we've got, uh, what have I got here? Phones ringing off the hook. Um, you have a rule. Uh, your first, the first thing you had here is always answer the phone, always. And I think for anybody who's listening, that doesn't mean you have to hire somebody who's there to always answer the phone because you know, you're paying them 100% of the time for the random times the phone answers. And maybe Corey, that's a good, a good sort of explanation. For anybody who might not understand how that works, um, how the phone system works, and phone systems are pretty sophisticated these days, but there is a way that no matter how, whatever's going on in your world, either the eight hours you're in the practice, or the, you know, the difference of when you're not, or the Fridays you might not be in, or the Saturdays, your phone's ringing. I don't, there's not a practice owner out there that doesn't come in and say, I'll be done. We had 12, you know, 12 calls over the weekend or six messages and you call them back and you know, they, they went ahead and uh, for, we went over here. Or we did that. That's, that's what you mean by the a million dollar practice has 2.4 million in potential. It's uh, on the inbound side. 
is mm-hmm. new patients you're not getting. And, and on top of that, there are people who, you know, their entire marketing campaign is to get more new patients. Well, those new patients just called you, um, you know, and you didn't answer. So, um, so maybe go into that. How does that, when somebody, when you get that call, um, how does that work? What do you do? What do you suggest gets done? And then what do you guys do? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you have a, a, a somebody who's running your front desk or answering the phone and they answer maybe a dozen, couple dozen calls. You guys answer, it, it's, it's like a kajillion or something. It's a lot of calls. <laughs> so you're like the pro at answering, answering calls. So maybe that's a good place to help practice owners understand, you know, what does a pro do? You got a team of people doing it. What do the pros do when they answer the phone? Yeah. So for us, we have, we have small dedicated teams that break up our large numbers at call force. Okay. Um, but if I were a practice, the, the most important thing is that you've created a system that you, you can't say we never miss a phone call and do nothing about it. Right. You're going to miss probably the same amount or maybe a few less phone calls. But if you create systems and processes that reduce that, and so right away, what I can tell you is practices generally miss the most calls from 8 to 9.30 their time in the morning. Mm-hmm. People broke their tooth at 8 a.m. or you know 6 p.m. last night or had a toothache that woke them up in the middle of the night. And people are not crazy. There are a few people, and I can back this up, that call at 4 a.m. expecting to get their dentist or leave okay. a voice mail. But most people say, okay, at 7.30 or 8 in the morning, I've had a problem that's been around for the last 12 to 14 hours. I'm going to call my practice now. Well, the practice is maybe just opening up or not open yet. Right. Or they're getting in, they're trying to get back to the calls from last night. They're prepping for their morning huddle. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that either if you are missing calls during that time, which your phone logs will show you, Mm -hmm. the data is there. We We don't have to dig for this. Staff accordingly. If you are doing a morning huddle and the phone rings, have a dedicated person for different days that answers that. Don't let that opportunity, whether it be $300 or $3,000, slip through the cracks. And with phone systems these days, if you are closed, you can have them, you can let them know if it's an emergency, please call this number. Mm -hmm. You can forward from phones to a cell phone or you can say you know what i just want to go with a company who provides this solution that's what we do Mm -hmm. and your call at eight o'clock at night would route to us we would answer it the way you do we would schedule that new patient in your system the way you would want and you come in the next day and the schedule is fuller because of it Mm -hmm. It, you said something funny, and I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. I didn't literally, and you know, I understand the concept. I didn't think about it until just now. Um, how many times are you in a huddle? The phone rings. It's in the morning. Now, people aren't calling you at, at 7.55 in the morning, uh, you know, just because they want to chat about, I don't know, whitening or something. They've waited since yesterday or two days ago or since the weekend. They're calling you now. Corey, I can't tell you how many times in a huddle you would hear somebody say, let that one roll to voicemail. I'll get it in a little bit. And as the person on the other end who wants to, you know, we want them to have that connected relationship with us. Um, You know, we just sort of pushed them off while we finished what we're doing and we let it roll to voicemail. I don't know how many times you hear that. That's the first, that's what popped in my head when you said that. Let uh, let that roll to voicemail. You nailed it there. So. Times, the earth is continually evolving as a business. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, you called one office and you left a voicemail and they called you back. Today, you call with your issue and they don't answer. You go check on the Google listing, not using them, and you call the next one. You've lost the opportunity. Or maybe they just haven't found someone yet. But today, we live in such an impatient society that if you have a problem you want it solved now, and if you can't solve it now, I'm going to the next one. Yeah, yeah. And on top of that, 
if again, back to the, the line between marketing and sales, you know, you might have a $5,000 a month marketing campaign. It worked. The phone rang. There's a hot prospect. And you know, if the phone rings, I'm going to do some quick math. So I'm going to get myself in trouble here, Corey. So like you spend $5,000 a month, the phone rings a hundred times, you know, you just spent a, a big chunk of money. I'm trying to do that. Is that 500 50, or 50? 50 dollars 50 bucks. You just spent 50 bucks to get that new prospective patient and then you rolled it to voicemail. So, you know, and that's the way I would think, you know, that I, when I speak, I, I'm usually asked to speak on either leadership, you know, as a, as a business owner or the practice owner versus I call it the, the contrasting and complementing practice owner mindset, which is your clinical stuff and your, uh, or excuse me, your dentist mindset, all your clinical stuff, your practice owner mindset, which is how to run your business, which is new customers, managing your team, managing money, managing all the stuff you're doing today is practice owner mindset stuff. This, during this coronavirus shutdown, there's no, first of all, you're not seeing patients, so there is no clinical. And second of all, focusing on your, your dental skills right now doesn't help fill a, a 90 day gap in cash flow. So if the phone rings, so there's a good way to look at it. Maybe it's every time you don't answer the phone, there's a $50 bill that you just threw out the window. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So what, um, when they do answer, what's uh, like you said, you, you know, you guys are the pros. Um, what is it that you, what do you want them doing or what do you, uh, teach your people to do that maybe docs aren't doing right now? Yeah. I, I mean, you have to look at it as a sales process mm -hmm. and that you're guiding someone down the path. And when they have a question about insurance or pricing or okay. procedure, mm. that's actually a concern. Okay. And our goal is to overcome those concerns and make them feel comfortable and willing to schedule. There's some people who just call and they call the practice and they say, Hey, I need a hygiene appointment. Right. That's gold. Convert need my teeth them. cleaned. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some people who are going to call and there's a, you can't look at it and they're going to say, Hey, you know, what's the price for this? Obviously they want it. They wouldn't be asking. They're just higher up in the funnel. Mm -hmm. or they have greater concerns or issues that, you know, they have financial issues or their insurance covers certain things, or they're just downright scared of the dentist. Mm -hmm. And you are then taking their hand on that call and guiding them through this journey as you overcome certain concerns. You know, when you call to sign up with a dental company, you have concerns over pricing. You have concerns over when will the product be shipped? Mm -hmm. And what is the quality of the product? Your patient's the same way when they call. Right. And so if we guide them along this journey to coming into the dental office, and then we knock it out of the park through that 35 year patient. And that's what we try to guide our team to do here. Okay. And what all dental practices need to do is we're training them on seeing where are they in our sales funnel? Where are they in the patient journey? Let's take them where they are and bring them into to the office so so the uh, and i'm i'm assuming the in, the intention is to give them an, number one answer their questions make them feel comfortable enough and then get them an appointment yes, get them sir. get them in the office yep and, and there's there's an important distinction you make there we can't ever have the mindset of making appointments we have to admit we have to have the mindset of getting patients in the office right well, so the other thing that I thought of was in the way you explained it, answering those questions back to the, the phone rings. And um, um, one of the things I'll tell you is, the, uh, is a secret. And Corey, I deal with everybody. The secret, and I learned this, I don't know, it was 20 years ago. The secret to those secret shopper calls a lot of times for dental practices. And there, there are companies that do that. They, you know, they'll, they'll call your office. Um, one of the things they do, so, so it just occurred to me is when they call your office to show, teach you or show you how your phone is really being answered, you know, because a dentist sits down and says, Oh, we answered every time. Um, it might be who answers the phone because one of them that I, because I had a, a friend who's practice, he called me and he said, is this legit? 
you know, and um, I said, well, let me hear the call. They call at lunch. Um, so it's, it's, it's like a chicken and egg thing. They call at lunch. Well, who's answering the phone at lunch? You know, the newest assistant, uh, cause you know, that's low man on the totem pole. So they're, you know, they're, uh, I told, um, I have five kids and uh, I remember one of them, he got a job at a movie theater and, um, he, uh, he came home and he said, and it, this was, he was 16 cause he just learned to drive and now I needed gas money. And, you know, girls got a lot cuter when you have a little gas money. So he needed some pizza money. And so he got this job and he came back and he goes, you won't believe what they have me doing. They, I'm, I'm emptying trash cans, you know, terrible people get sick in the bathroom. I got to mop that. It's just awful. And I said, you know why? And he looked at me and I said, because you're the new guy. I said, most, most people there, they're not even going to remember your name. You're just new guy until you stick for a few months. And then they might learn your name. And I said, but the awesome thing is the kid that comes behind you, you know who that kid is? The new guy. The new guy. <laughs> so that's who we put on the phone at lunch. We put the new guy on the phone at lunch because, you know, because we, we watched a, um, um, a uh, interview with Steve and Corey and Corey said, always answer the phone. So let's put new guy on the phone and then we're all going to go to lunch. And they come back and number one, that person knows very little about what you do. Um, number two, their, their intention is probably to get you off the phone as quick as possible so you don't ask any real hard questions that they might have to answer when everybody comes back. And so as soon as you come back from lunch, you know what they say? You know, How, how'd you do? Oh, it was fine. You know, and again, there's a $50, you spent $50 to make the phone ring and tossed it out. And what occurred to me, the reason I went into that, you know, big long description is the, the is that's the times we pick that are the worst times because I'm a busy guy. I'm going to, when, when I call, I'm calling first thing in the morning because it's been on my mind and it's been on my punch list and I need to get it off. Or I'm going to call around lunch when I have a little break in my day. And on the receiving end, uh, I mean, that's probably the worst, worst time for me as a practice owner. I need to put my best people on the phone then, not, my, not the worst people. Yes. Is that a fair observation? 100%. That practices are built just like businesses. And if we want mm -hmm. to succeed in today's environment, we need to build a product or a service that is consumer centric. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, inside, so what, what would I hear if, if, you know, if you were answering my calls, what would I hear when I said, you, you know, I'm thinking, do you take my insurance? Yeah, because, we know what insurances are in and out of network. Okay, for, now, for my office, so to speak. Yeah, so we know what times you're open. We know your team members. We know the last person that they saw for hygiene. Huh. Um, oh, no, this is not, we're not here as an answering service. We are okay. here as an extension of the practice. Mm. And we're here on that funnel to take them on their journey. We're just not going to say, oh, yeah, let me have Susie call you back to answer that question. They could be gone when Susie calls them back. Right, right. Okay. And so uh, we see ourselves as an extension that's here to put more new patients and more ex existing patients on the schedule for the practice. And that's a good distinction. Um, I'm right now, I'm making sure I got notes here. Um, uh, um, yeah, it's not an answering service. And maybe that's a good, maybe that is a good distinction because I think a lot of practice owners might have said, yeah, I had an answering service. I mean, I've heard it. Yeah, I had an answering service, you know, 10 years ago and, you know, didn't work that well. And just as many people left an answering machine. But that is a, um, so how do you know that stuff? I mean, that, you know, um, how do you know that part about my practice, that stuff about my practice? So first of all, the only thing we do is dental. And okay. so that's all we train on. We, we do not know salons. We don't know healthcare. We know dentistry. Hmm. Um, and second of all, before we begin, we're learning, we're sitting down with you and saying, how, where do new patients go? Are you staggering your schedule? What ops are for emergencies? What times are you open? Who's the best person to reach if there is an in-depth billing question? Uh, before we start, and we're creating something called a custom doctor profile, that then when we get a call, we have this suite of information that then we can provide details quickly to guide people along that journey. 
do you ever find that, um, you know, dentistry is a small business, it's a cottage industry. And so big corporate systems and funnels, you know, they, they largely don't exist. Do you ever find through that process that a practice owner, so you're asking the questions that the person calling is in a high probability going to ask you know, the top five questions, and then you work out a if then, and yeah. by the time you're done, you, you've led them to, let's get you in, what's the best day. You ever find that a lot of practices don't even have that, and they develop it as you go through that conversation, and they say, well, gosh, I don't know, how do we answer that? I wouldn't, I would say generally there's an answer. Okay. Um, some practices there's a thought out answer and a strategic answer and some there's some practices there's an answer there's always an answer right right generally but is it might, yeah the answer might be i need to get back or i need to finish my lunch you know i mean i'm sure you've heard it i've heard it you know we're at lunch right now can you call back at you know one well that's exactly what i want to ask a, pro, a prospective new uh patient to do is take time out of their day to call me back. But yep. you hear it all the time. Oh yeah, and, and that's the way dentistry's changing. Yeah. Dentistry has to evolve to be here to serve our patients. And we can choose the hours that we're here, but let's build systems where we can answer at seven o'clock at night, but let them know, hey, I can see you for a limited exam tomorrow at 8 a.m. Okay. Are they scheduling in like my schedule and my practice's yes. schedule? Yeah, Through, so uh, if, we're in, if we're in open dental, you know, we're finding that existing patient, that new patient, we're getting their date of birth, their wireless contact number, their address. We're actually filling the details that the practice wants because we're, again, we're an extension. And so if we're doing something differently than the practice would do, it would feel odd and clunky. Mm -hmm. If there's a 48 hour cancellation notice and someone calls in to cancel, we're gonna let them know that because again, we're an extension. Okay, huh. Um, what else, what are the big things you see that jump out in sort of that process? Uh, so first of all, they got in their mind, the phone always needs answered. Secondly, it always needs answered the right way. Um, what are some other things that, that sort of jump out to you on the inbound call side that practice owners typically miss or typically do an okay job at but could really do better at actually those are those are the two main points i've okay. i've noticed over time that if there's a lot of different rabbit holes to chase but if we provide really concise you know here's one two so that you can go home and provide that one two punch to your practice mm -hmm. we've actually seen more of a difference there's minuscule things but those two encompass a lot of Okay. The biggest changes that we've seen, I mean, we've worked with practices that have been able to add $800,000 of additional dentistry in months because of these simple processes mm -hmm. and then discussing and providing services for outbound treatments such as unscheduled treatment and unscheduled hygiene. Okay. And, and that's probably a good place to transition that. Um, I did have one note I wanted to reinforce, and maybe, you know, this is, is not really a question, but an observation. You and I have uh, talked, um, you know, before about this. Um, there are going to be, you know, not to be gloom and doomy, but there are a lot of dental practices that aren't going to make it through this coronavirus business interruption. Forget the, the clinical virusy part. Um, you know, you, there are practices that operate on a 10% profit margin that just lost 25% of their production. Um, those numbers don't add up. So basically you just lost, you're, you're losing 15%. And at the end of the year, you know, uh, I mean, the bank says you can't operate, you can't pay your bills. Yep. You've got 85 cents to pay a dollar's worth of bills you know, you can't do it. And, and uh, you know, I'm hearing numbers, fairly substantial numbers. I mean, it could be one in five dental practices don't make it. Now, it doesn't mean they're not doing the dentistry. It m means they might go ahead and retire now instead of five years from now. Um, it does mean that they're probably not getting the price out of their practice they wanted. Um, I believe, Corey, they can still fix it. Oh. You can't fix it by doing what you've always done. 
You can't fix it by thinking you're going to go back to the way it was. Um, you said a great word earlier, and and not only did I write it down, but I got my little highlighter out and I highlighted urgency. You've got to have this urgency that, you know, our urgent, we can't be in a rush to get back to the way it was. We've got to be in a rush to get back to business and find our new operating normal. And, and not the clinical side again, not, you know, it's going to take 10 more minutes to turn it off and $8 of PPE per patient and all that junk but how, again, how we answer the phone. So my point to that is what I wrote down was misplaced patients. Um, if there's five dental practices along the street you're on and one of them doesn't make it for whatever reason, there's, there are right there 800, 1,000, 1,200 patients who now need to go somewhere. And a lot of times docs just walk away. You know, they just say, I've got to, you know, I'm gonna close up. I'm, I'm 67 and I should have retired, you know, five years ago. Uh, <laughs> and they just decide now what better time than right now. Um, and they're probably right. I mean, it's going to be hard to get back on track through the end of 2020. It just is for any business. Um, it's going to be different. It's going to be a different track. So, you know, right now there are a lot of misplaced patients and they're calling. They're saying, you know, Dr. Jones went ahead and retired and you know, he was only 56. He was a young guy like Steve Parker. He's only 58. Um, <laughs> and, and you look at it and say, you know, it's just, it's just time. And they retire and they send their patients a letter and they love them. And they might say, go see Dr. Smith down the street or whatever. But the fact of the matter is those patients, they're different than they used to be. Um, when you, um, when, when you closed and you retired and you sent a letter to your patient said, you know, I've talked to Dr. Jones and he'll, you know, he'll take your charts and that kind of thing. Patients just went. Today, you know where they go? They go to this, they go to their phone, they go to Yelp and they say, well, if Dr. Jones isn't going to be my dentist anymore, my friend told me about Dr. Smith. And so that's the new thing. And Corey, I had, um, I had the numbers here. Um, from online, 70% of new patients find their dentist online. Oh, uh, no surprise. 65% um, use a phone, use a device, which is significant. That, and here I'll tell you why that's important. Because 54, I'm looking at my little chart, 54% appoint immediately, which means um, number one, and this is a whole website optimization thing, but make sure that, you know, there are a lot of people who have a picture with their phone number on it and I'm, you know, I'm tapping it and nothing happens. One of the things is make sure that they can tap and call your phone because when you're on a computer screen, it doesn't matter. But if 65% of people are using this, they look at you and say, oh gosh, I need a dentist. It's time, you know, Dr. Smith retired and they go to Google and they say best dentist in Provo and it finds dentist around them and they tap it and they call and somebody spent 50 bucks to make that happen on websites and all this and then nobody answers the phone or they answer it and say oh it's lunch you know can you call back at 105 so there are a lot of misplaced patients right now is my point so you're not just answering the phone for your existing patients I believe, and I, I think the numbers will bear me out by about August or September, there's going to be about a, a shakeup in about 20% of the dental patient base that is looking for a new dentist for whatever reason or another. 20% of docs aren't going to come through this voluntarily or, you know, out of necessity. That's a lot of patients looking for new dentists right now at a time when you're packed, you're jammed, schedule's full because you got to get, you got to do three or four months worth of hygiene in one month to get yourself back on track. And then the restorative that comes off of that, you've got to cram in. So my personal belief and what I'm seeing right now is people are busy with their existing patients, but it's probably a good time to amp up your, your back end, your new patient acquisition, uh, just from those patients who are looking or changing or couldn't get a hold of somebody for three months and you know, that didn't work. So they're looking around. So, Inbound is critical, I guess, is the, and urgency was the word you used, and I think, I think that's really appropriate. Oh, I, I, I totally agree, and 
we can kind of dive into outbound outbound is this juggernaut and mm -hmm. it's really interesting because uh, in a traditional dental office steve we all know that the phone rings and that those right. are our opportunities mm -hmm. outbound is fascinating because the larger corporate side of dentistry is becoming really good mm -hmm. at being efficient and effective right and outbound calls is a differentiator that practices can use that puts them on the cutting edge of being more profitable and productive. Mm -hmm. And so there's two types of outbound calls that I recommend. Now, there's <clears throat> post -op, there's follow up on treatment, and those are all continuing to be essential. Okay. But with the introduction of patient relationship software years ago, the ability to text your patients, hey, Corey, you're overdue. Let's get you scheduled. Reply yes if you do want to schedule. Those are fantastic. People check their phones all the time. Mm -hmm. But we also need to make sure that we're calling people who aren't as likely to respond to those text messages or emails. Mm -hmm. Because when we call someone, when I get a text, I have the ability to look at it and say, mm, do I want to respond? I don't feel any pressure in that moment. Right. But when I am on the phone with someone and they say, hey, Corey, when can we get you scheduled? They're putting me in this yes or no or yes or yes position. And that's a game changer. Mm -hmm. Hey, the doctor noticed you were overdue. I have a time available tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. When would be best for you? Not, oh, do you want to come in? Like maybe yes or yes. And that's what Outbound Calls does. And Recall is vital because hygiene is the lifeblood or what introduces additional production into the practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's where cavities are discovered. It's where root canals are discussed. And then treatment is the money that literally walked out the door that could be on your books. Right. It's a, it's a heavy amount of that $2.4 million. And so at CallForce, we've discovered really good ways to build efficient, and effective outbound systems and that's what i want to share today is how can a practice do it themselves okay cool so outbound and again um you said something interesting follow-up so but your the follow-up is the is the reason for the call you know that's why you're calling the patient so i think it's important to make that distinction you're not just randomly calling people out of the blue you're calling somebody who is who is a patient. They've been in. They've seen you. They love you. You know they've agreed to give you their money, and for this thing when they really need this thing, and you're not pushing treatment off on them that they don't need. You're just trying to facilitate that. You know, get that treatment done now, as opposed to watching it for you know a year or two. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it never gets better. I, I, watching is a word. As a practice owner, um, you know, I, I would ban the word, uh, I would ban two words, Corey. One was, and it's interesting, they're both sort of in your strike zone. We would, we would ban the word cancel, you know, and I actually had a little piece of paper on the wall with cancel and a red circle and a line through it. You can um, reappoint or reschedule or move or whatever you want to do, you know, oh, I'm sorry, you can't come in today. I've got, I see you like Tuesdays, so how about next Tuesday at seven? But the intention is not to, you know, because again, that's what happens in the morning. The phone rings, we answer it, and we say, oh, Mrs. Jones, I'm sorry, you need to cancel, you know, that $4,000 we had in the schedule today for you. Call us back when you're ready, you know. And at, at the end of the day, that is, um, sales has a bad name, but especially right now, that's a case you can't afford to let slip away. I yeah, mean, it's a case that actually makes a difference. There's, mm -hmm. the, there's perspective that we can look this as is if we're diagnosing real treatment that mm -hmm. patients need and that will benefit their lives, we're doing the right thing. Right, right. Saying, hey, we need you to come in. Hey, I understand you can't come in today but I've got a few times next week. When can we get you in? I don't want this to get out of control, Mrs. Jones. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we get you taken care of. You're not being a bad guy. Right. 
you're not pushing. You're also doing the right thing. If you were creating fake treatment plans and misdiagnosing certain issues, there's a, there's a line we're crossing there, but that's not happening. Right. Right. If we're doing the right thing and then helping people understand educationally the importance of getting that done, we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, we, um, assign our where they say you run everything through your filter we assign something to that patient that may not exist we assume they're not doing it for you know we invent things and i'll tell you a quick example years ago uh when i, I started doing practice consulting and and you know i've done sort of everything in the dental business you know owned labs done uh, i did consulting and what was really interesting was i had a, a practice that was struggling out in you know sort of the outskirts of town and I couldn't understand why and you know as a lab owner it uh, as I got into this I mean he owed me a lot of money that he shouldn't have owed and I, I would sit down and say listen I'm not gonna and I'm not kicking you out on the street I just would like to understand you know I'm new to the dental field I'd, I'd like to understand this and he said oh we got terrible patients you know we were right next to a big Ford plant and there's nothing but blue collar and you know they um and this was probably 12 or 15 years ago um he said they're all blue collar and they have terrible teeth and they've got you know crappy insurance and i happened to it was just a weird coincidence my life right before that i was a tier one provider to ford so and a lot of other big fortune 100 manufacturers so I called somebody at, uh, that I knew and I said, you know, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm in the dental world now and here's what this, this person told me, you know, how does this work? And they said, well, we have, um, Corey, I can't remember, it was like Denimax insurance or whatever. And it was, and we pay this, this, and this. And, and I got to look and well, they're paying like 30 or 40% more than, you know, the crappy insurances. And number two, I said, and I, I happen to know this going in, I said, can you just tell me what the average revenue of or the income is for the, the workers? Now, it's changed some in the past 15 years. It was $105,000 with overtime, hundred and five grand. Now, that was back, you know, 15 years ago. So I went back into this doc and I said, how about this? What if I could give you a steady flow of patients whose average income was $105,000 a year? and their insurance paid 40 percent more than this one this one this one this one he said man i'd be knocking it out of the park and i said well let's walk over to the door right there is where that exists so in his mind when a patient came in and and here's where it started i would say why are we watching and you know i learn a lot so i ask a lot of silly questions and i said well this patient needs three crowns why are we just doing one they they can't afford it they work over here at ford so I, you know, I don't want to ask them for three thousand uh, dollars. You know, so I'll do one now and I'll watch the other two. And you know, a few years later, I, it suddenly occurred to me, what do you watch it do? I mean, if you you're basically putting it off for six months, and we're going to talk about it then. Have you ever seen? Have you ever have there anybody ever come in and it got better? And you said, well, I'll be darned. We watched it. You don't need those crowns anymore. It doesn't happen. But somehow we run it through our own filter, and we say, ah, this guy in coveralls that works over here at Ford you know, he can't afford it. So I'm not even going to bring up the other two, or I'm going to softly bring up the other two. So I asked this guy, I said, here's what I want you to do for 30 days. I said, you treatment plan what you think they need, not something that's out there, but what they need right now, you present that and you let them decide what they want to pay for and or not. I think his first month was $50,000 extra dollars. Of, of accepted treatment. And, you know, yeah. you and I both know it's a numbers game. Um, it wasn't only the 50,000 he treatment plan. He probably treatment planned 150,000 extra. Oh, yeah. And a third of that got accepted. But, you know, a third of zero is still zero. Um, and so that whole dynamic, I think, is part of your outbound call mindset, we'll say, is all you're doing is following up on treatment you they've been in, you determine they need it, you're giving them ways to get that done, meaning here's the schedule and here's financing options, which is somebody else's thing. But in the outbound call, whether you think of it as selling or just um, just 
reminding the patient of the treatment they need. Um, just the straight numbers game means your your treatment's going up, right? So is that what you, so how do your people, you know, if you went in, if you came into my practice and said, here's what I'm going to train your people to do an outbound calling, what yeah. would that look like? What oh, would that sound is, like? This gets me excited. because That's your are, thing? <laughs> these, no, these are really simple changes, and we're just going to okay. go through three of them. Okay, awesome. Number one, you have to call when people are home. If you call at 11 a.m., no one's home. Right. 91% of all dental calls at that time or during that time frame go to voicemail. Right. So if you call from, now we call from 5 to 7.30 and we're twice as likely to get a patient on the phone than the dental practice. Now, if you want to do 4 to 5.30 at yours, that's better. Mm -hmm. But people get home at 5, 5.30 and they have time to pick up the phone mm -hmm. and actually schedule. Well, that's a good number, twice as likely. And one of the things I know about you, Corey, is everything is, you know, like you don't just throw these off. You've measured it. You yeah, know, you've gone into a kajillion calls and said, this is the best time to call. So, you know, if that's the best time to call, yeah, don't, you know, don't start at three in the afternoon, you know, and that's, a, that's an interesting thing there. How many practices, how many docs say, well, you know, call and remind them from three before you, you know, you finish up and get out of here at five. Well, you're on their work schedule. So you're yeah. not you're not getting anybody because they're not home yet. Okay. So exactly. call so when they're home. Genius. <laughs> call when they're home. Now, second, we're just gonna go into the script a little here. Is okay. that first of all, you always want to let them know that the doctor also noticed. So hey, you know, Mrs. Jones, I'm I'm calling today because you know, Dr. Parker noticed that you're overdue for your professional hygiene cleaning and he wants to get you back in. Ah. Imply that, hey, yeah, we noticed you're overdue. That's, that's something where you're putting it on the patient. Now, another option that you can use here is, hey, you know, I realized last time you left the office that it, it doesn't look like we got you scheduled. You're taking the responsibility. Now, though it is not true, you're putting, in some cases it is, you're putting it on yourself saying, hey, Steve, it looks like I didn't get you scheduled. I've got a time available tomorrow at nine and Monday at four and Tuesday at three. When works best for you? Okay. You're not saying, hey, do you want to come back in? Right. What works for you? You're saying, here's a time in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening I have. When works best? All you have the option to say is yes, yes, or yes. Ah, okay. Rather than yes or no. Is I'm giving you the option to say no. Oh, you have to decide to pave that road yourself. Okay. So the other thing is, so I'm going to ask you this. How about this? Our records indicate, you know, hey, thank you. I'm glad you answered the phone. Our records indicate seems a little, a tad less personal than doctor noticed or when you left, we did. Yeah. But, so I think what you're saying is just, you know, talk to them like they're a person, like they're a customer, like you want them back, but talk to them, talk to them in a way that you're together in this, not, you know, our records show indicated that as patient number 1537, you're due, you know, yeah, cool. um, you know, and maybe part of it is talk to them the way you'd like to be talked to by your healthcare provider. Not, you know, somebody calling you to, from Amazon to fill order number 37, but talk to them in such a way that it's, it makes them feel part of your practice, that, that you care. Don't fake care. I mean, all of these are real, but it just depends on how you reach out. I'm sure doctor really does care, and doctor really did notice. Yeah. Um, so it's okay to just to say that. That's, that's, I like that. Doctor noticed. Okay. So you want, you want to make it personal. You want, to, you want to call from the right time. And then you also want to make sure that you're leaving notes. If you find out that okay. Mrs. Jones has moved or someone unfortunately has passed away or had a bad experience, mark that within the system. Because if you don't, the next person who goes back the month later to make calls mm -hmm. calls all of those same people. First of all, you irritate and annoy patients. Right. 
And second of all, you're less efficient. And you sort of, um, you feel like from the receiving end, um, I feel like, gosh, you know, you were really personal last month, but this month, you know, you don't remember I said, you know, my dad just died or that we're, you know, whatever it is, um, you lose that. And again, you didn't say it, but now they feel like a number. They can get, and here's the other thing, Corey, I always say this, um, you know, you and I both work with a lot of practices of a lot of sizes and DSOs, and, and I think there's a place for that. They're, you know, first of all, second of all, you know, you can't put that genie back in the bottle. They exist, but they exist in a certain way. It's, um, and I'm trying to, I've got a couple things that popped in my head here. They, they will, um, when that's the fourth dentist in that office in the past five years, because they're coming in, coming out of dental school, going off on their own, moving to the office across town, whatever they're doing, that is kind of impersonal. So, but it's okay for that patient apparently because it's cheap or whatever reason that they, that they're working with them. You've got to be different, especially if you're sole practitioner, your practice is your practice. It's you. They're coming to see you. They're doc They're coming to see Dr. Parker and everything you do needs to communicate that. Is that a safe way to put that or a good way to put kind of what you're doing here? To absolutely. No, we're bringing a personal feeling back to dentistry. There is great systems. There's great patient relationship softwares. I've been going to the same dentist now since we moved to the state of Utah when I was 10. Mm -hmm. And you know why? It's because he knows who I am. His hygienist, Norma, mm -hmm. literally knows everything about my life. She knows the breakups I've been through. She knows <laughs> the schools that I've gone to. And because of that, it's personal and I love it. I'll right. pay more money because they also know who I am. She knows that I don't like shot, those big needles. Like she knows who I am and that's worth it to me. There's a part of healthcare and especially dentistry that mm -hmm. is family. And a lot of people yearn for and want to go to a dentist like that. Right. And, you know, um, again, with what I do, kind of my a finger on the pulse of the industry in a sense, you know, Walmart is, is experimenting with dental clinics inside of a Walmart. I can tell you this, that's going to happen. It just is. Uh, and they have salons in there and they have I don't know, Subway sandwich shops. In fact, Subway's biggest franchise or biggest sandwich shops are inside of Walmarts. They're going to have that. And so I get practice owners who get worried about that and say, oh my gosh, they're going to come in. They're going to be cheaper. Yes, they are. You can't change that. But what you can do is something they can't because there's going to be, I don't know, in five years, there'll be five docs, maybe six, who knows? And it doesn't mean they're, they do terrible dentistry, but it just means that, you know, they don't own Walmart. They, you own, you know, Dr. Parker's family dental practice. They, you know, this doc is, it's a stopping point. So that patient, the patient who's willing to go there is probably not your patient. And that's okay. Just, uh, like, just like there's a fleet of different cars. We've got Ferrari, we've got Lexus, right. we've got Range Rover. Right. And then we've got Keon, we've Kia, we've got Scion, and there's not a right choice for everyone. If everyone drove, you know, bright red Ferraris, they'd all be the same. And it'd, be all boring. it'd be boring to drive a bright red Ferrari, wouldn't it? it would be, so it's it would be. I, so. I might like to have that problem, <laughs> but it is. It's but the are different. Well, you so the, everything you communicate is just that. So you know, Walmart when they hire you know, the new office manager or the new front desk person or somebody in the call center, they're going to call as if they're, it's hard for them to say, you know, Dr. Jones, who saw you in the Walmart, you know, dental office, uh, who took over from Dr. Smith, who took over from Dr. Johnson, we care. Um, they may or may not say that because the patient isn't coming for that experience. They're coming because they probably take their insurance, number one, number two, it's cheap. Um, they're not doing anything outside of that. So if you do enhanced treatment, if you do any kind of um, sleep, if you do any, you know, airway, if you do anything outside of that, that a lot of practice owners and dentists like to do these days, 
the, the thing to keep in mind is Walmart can't do that. They won't do that. They're not going to do treatment because the, you know, the newest doc in, in, you know, Walmart number 1427 is doing it. They got to do them in all or none. So they're going to do none. So this is a good way to make that distinction. And it needs to be, when it's genuine, it's genuine. Um, it's hard to imagine Walmart being genuine. And I'm not picking on Walmart. I'm just saying there's a reason you go there. And it's not for warm, fuzzy, comfortable relationship from the time you're 10 till, you know, through, through your life of dentistry. You go to the, the, the practice owners who are watching this. And I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. You're not competing with Walmart. You're just, I, I firmly believe that. You are not competing with Walmart. You are competing with, you know, somebody who's your age and your location down the street and it's, it's uh, I guess I, I would say, don't paint all patients with the same brush. Be personal, know them. And yeah, notes are an awesome way to do that. Um, and it's not disingenuous. It's, I mean, it's just you, I mean, you can't remember everybody. No, but it's nice that you went to the effort. I would think that if you called me and said, hey, I understand last time we called, you know, your, your mom had just passed away and, you know, sorry about that. And are you getting back to normal? And, you know, I, I know you probably got it in your notes, but I appreciate that you asked me. The fact uh, that they put them in the notes differentiates yeah. yourself. Yeah. So, okay. So call when they're home, personalize it with doctor noticed or we noticed, and then take key things away, put them in the notes. And well, and maybe number two, three A is use them. You know, use those, use the, the, what, what's in the notes. Okay. What else should we do? To be honest, those are, those are our major hitting points. Again, the, we, we don't want to provide too much, but those really do the, if I offered one last piece of advice is uh -huh. you have to align your employee incentives with the practices goals. Okay. And this is more even just as as a you know operator of call force, how we have to align our vision with our employees' vision. We just can't say, "Hey, do this." Right. Once you hit a certain scale and a certain size, the ballpark changes. Mm -hmm. But if you can say, "Hey, you know, if you want to stay in, you know, could you call from five to six thirty tonight? And for every patient you schedule, we'll we'll provide you a two dollar bonus." Hmm. or hey guys for every new patient or once we hit our 60th new patient for the month let's all go out to lunch okay. align your practice incentives with your employee incentives if you want to say rah 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 i want to grow this month why do they care right they the make 14 dollars an hour whether you do this or do this right but if it becomes fun if they become part of the entrepreneurial sphere for every, for every new patient you take, hey, we're going to give you a dollar. We're going to give you $2. Mm -hmm. Their vision is aligned with your vision of growing the practice. Hey, I'm staying tonight to call treatment calls, but I get $10 for every treatment that I book. You make her life more fun because when she gets on the phone with Susie, she has an incentive to take her down that funnel. Right, right. But if Susie has a concern and she doesn't get compensated for it differently, Oh yeah, no, that's a great point. Well, we'll call you back and check in to see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that your whole organization has incentives and alignment to be going where you want to go. Right. And that way, when you row the boat, you row the boat in unison and mm -hmm. you head in the same direction together and it's fun again. I, I think it, it um, and I'm a big, in, I, I, I never say bonus plan. Um, I'm a big incentive plan person. Um, and you, you just hit that nail on the head. I always say uh, any incentive that I pay is out of new money. It's money that I, that I now have as the owner. Um, and again, money is the fuel of your practice. And there are a lot of dental practice owners who have figured that out the hard way in the last 60 to 90 days um, when they just want to see patients and cash flow means you know their business doesn't survive and they they don't get to see patients anymore in their own business um but that 
if your if the effort of your team results in ten thousand extra dollars, you should share in that. Find a way to share in that new production or new revenue or new new patients or new. I mean, there's a number assigned to every new patient we put into the chair turns into X dollars. There's a point at which you can figure that out. You know, do three months in a row and then just back into it. You know, our, our production went, we put, I'm going to do math again, Corey, so you got to help me. So <laughs> I, um, I put 50,000, my, my production went up 50 grand and I put um, 50 new patients into the practice this month. Well, that's, is that a thousand dollars? So that's a thousand dollars per patient. So the value of that new patient is a thousand dollars this month. And the neat thing is if I do it well, one out of three or uh, one or uh, for every dollar of hygiene generates $3 of restorative. So it's not just $50,000 because next month I'm going to do that multiple of restorative. And the cool thing is I'm going to do it again six months from now because I got them in today and I got them in six months from now. So um it's uh maybe there's your dental office calling back they're gonna call and confirm your appointment <laughs> um, so you know um i think that is that, that and that's a thing that gets missed a lot of docs will say all right let's do all these things see what happens and get to the end of the month and then you know we'll dish something out there's no focus there's just let's see what happened i'm giving some money or the worst thing is what i always say is backwards where you're giving them a bonus on what we're already doing, um, you know, or you pay out a thousand dollars in bonuses for um, twenty, you know, uh, twenty thousand dollars less production, and I see that all the time. Um, you know, your your twenty thousand dollar hole just turned into twenty one. So I, I I agree with it, that alignment, and if it's um, and new patients is a good is a good target. I think um, if you do your job well. You can do that math. You can say production went up 50 grand, got um, 50 new patients. You know, it's $1,000 for every new patient. So in, what are we in, May? In June, 50 new patients should equal $50,000. And over three or four months, you get, you know, what's called a moving average. And then suddenly you just know it. But you know in your mind, if all I do is focus on new patients, that's what's going to happen to my production. So I'm going to share that. So, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's smart. Do you see a lot of that um, in the docs that you help or you bring on that in calling that they align it to new patients like that? Uh, I, I don't, uh, okay. but we don't ask that question too. So okay. I, I wouldn't be the best answer. I'm sure there's many people who would know more, but that's how we align our team. Okay. People, yeah. are, people are signing up for our service because they want more new patients, not just the calls answered, but you want the calls answered because you want more new patients in the chair. And so they actually have incentives to schedule new patients and existing patients. Ah, uh, okay. And deal with it in a quality helpful manner. So here's a, here's a perspective change for any practice owner who's listening and feels like, well, gosh, you know, they're basically telling me I should, you know, this is all about the money. Here's what I can promise you. One of two things. Number one, I, I can promise you. Number one, that patient's going somewhere. It may not be you. And number two, I can promise you again, I hear all this fear about, you know, the big corporate practice that just opened at the end of the street. They're doing that. So if you're not, what do they say? You better, you know, number one, take care of your customers or somebody else will. Um, take care of your patients or somebody else will. So if your team, if you feel there's something wrong with incenting your team to get that patient in, again, I promise you, the number one, the patient's going somewhere and somebody else will be, you know, very assertive at reaching out and saying, hey, you know, we'd love to be your dentist. Or, hey, you know, saw that you had, you know, uh, have you been to the dentist lately? Yeah, I've got this crown. I've been, we've been watching it for six months or we've been watching it for two years well, why don't you come in and get a second opinion from us? It's happening whether you want to be a part of it or not. So, you know, incenting your team to be a part of it and lift the entire organization is, you know, something that you, if you're not doing now, you should consider doing. And if you struggle with that as, you know, it's not good clinical dentistry, then that's right. That's awesome. 
but it is good practice ownership. Yeah. And, the, and right now, again, at the end of the day, when you got 25% of your uh, yearly production missing, you know, you better get them in. Mm -hmm. I awesome. I yeah. agree. What, um, what haven't we covered that you, I've got everything down here on our list, anything that's, you know, and, and again, I'm, you know, there's the assumption what you do at Call Force is you do this all day long, 20, are you, is it 24-7? I mean, do people uh, have we're right about now? 16 hours a day, seven days of the week. So we're, yeah. we're not there yet, but we're close. If you miss the four in the morning call, it, you know, it, I know it probably eats, it would eat at you, but, you know, right now it's okay as long as you're moving to that. Um, how many calls do you all handle or manage or work a month for practice? Hundreds of thousands. That is unbelievable. And, and the neat thing is you have a system to, to feel personal um, with every one. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, do you have a, um, um, uh, sort of a demo or a resource or something? And yeah. if somebody says, you know, that makes sense. Uh, maybe I use call force as a balance. Uh, do you have somebody, do you have people that you just answer their phone period that you do inbound and outbound and yeah. they, don't, they don't even have somebody doing it? We have a lot of practices and we actually put together a white paper okay. of everything that we spoke about today. Okay. Awesome. Uh, we'll, we'll include that, but it's info.getcallforce.com forward slash TPD. Okay. Info.getcallforce. I'll put this in the, in the notes here. But all, all of the scripting, all of the data on missed calls, all of the treatment and uh, calling times are included in this white paper. You can go there, you can wow. download it so that you can share it with your staff. And you just did this, like you stayed up all night and did this, right? Because well, I, I, did, I didn't stay, but we have a great person <laughs> in marketing who helped out with that. They, you, they, they got to stay up all night. <laughs> um, no, I, we appreciate that. And, and um, in fact, I'll try and I'll put the link in so it can go straight to it. They can click it and, you know, just download it. Um, how would somebody get a hold of, you know, again, if they wanted to sort of explore a little bit what you do, uh, how would they get a hold of you or get a hold of? Um, They're actually on that identical form will be a way to request a demo or contact okay. us directly. Okay. Awesome. I, I know that, that um, your business in the recent past has really taken off and, you know, there's a reason. Um, and I think what I see with practice owners, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of letting people who do things really well and it's all they do, let them do it for me. You know, I have, I mean, for years, I've, I've always been in business on my own for a long time. And, you know, I would have an in-house accountant and that person was really good, but my accounting firm was a whole lot better. That's all they did. Um, I would break off pieces of my business. I think even a CFO, you know, the financial part, I use a fractional CFO, you know, but I don't need a, I mean, in that, I think um, he has like five clients and, you know, so I get really good and was a CFO for a, a fortune 500 company. Um, I can't, I can't have that whole person. Oh, yeah. um, and the other part is something like this. I mean, if somebody's really good, if you have numbers and conversions and are putting appointments in and it, and that's happening, the, you're, your customer slash patient is getting that service every time. Um, I mean, so, so let me ask you one other question. It just popped in my head. Yeah. Is there a way that you're, I'm using call force just for say up to eight o'clock at lunch and after five o'clock. So just figure that out. So what we actually do is when the practice is closed, it goes straight to us. And then when the practice is open, it rings three to five times, just 20 to 25 seconds. If no uh, one picks it up, it then goes through. So we're saying, okay, you're about to miss this call. It's mm -hmm. going to route to us. Okay. Then it says, you know, somebody says, hey, thanks for calling, you know, Dr. You know, Dr. Parker's family <laughs> dental. And that's pretty cool. Okay. And cool. I'm sure there's some back end cool. magic. Uh, yeah, the goal then. is to avoid all the missed calls. And so we want and believe that the dental practice has the best opportunity. We are your backup team. We are your extension or your final goalie in case you're about to miss that opportunity. Okay. 
Well, a um, lot of good information, a lot of good content, and that's really what this series about is about. Coming back stronger is about things that you know. It's a good time to restructure things. It's a good time to sort of you know drop back and punt and say, you know, I've always done this. You know, I've there's a lot of staff, Corey, that's not coming back. There's a lot of staff. Um, and it's not necessarily your your professional staff, but it's you know front office staff, it's back office staff, it's it's somebody who's making more on unemployment, and you know is going to do that for a few months in this particular situation. You know that won't be happening in 2021, but right now it is. And if you're going to replace somebody, um, this might be a good way to do that, to experiment with that. Instead of, so there's the other thing, instead of replacing somebody and training them up on how to answer the phone, you know, no matter what's going on when the, when the phone rings, if they're using somebody like call force, nothing changes, no matter what happens internally. So uh, you see a lot of that, you see a lot of docs using it for that reason. Exactly. It's consistent. Management, so, management's tough. You are a clinical dentist, you are a CFO for your practice, and you are the manager of all employees. And so it's easier sometimes to say, they do it really well. I only pay it, pay them if they do it really well. Okay. Damn. Okay. Awesome. And we're I, holding ourselves accountable. Yeah. And, and again, it's the one thing you do. And the one thing you said earlier, I made a note of, um, there are a lot of companies that do, that break it down into all different industries. So, you know, they're answering the chiropractor's office and they're answering the veterinarian's office and you guys just do dentistry. Um, yeah. and that's gotta, that's gotta show up in the, in the sort of the quality of the, the way inbound calls are and the sort of the focus of the outbound calls. So Absolutely cool. it does. all right, well, Corey, I appreciate you getting up early and coming on. We watched the sunrise in Provo. Um, you, you know, I, uh, we've been on calls before where, um, and I've seen cars go by, you're by, you're in front of the river, right? Yeah, there's we're a river in the river trail right behind us. It's, uh, and I, I was telling you, like, on one of the first calls we were on, I was watching, and, you know, you were talking, you were, you know, and you're very passionate about what you do. You can tell that comes through. And there's a little person walking behind you, and through those shades, it looked like, I was joking, I said, it looks like Bigfoot's walking behind <laughs> you. There was this figure sort of hunkered over, walking along the river. Um, but you know, that's a great place to wake up to, um, is, you know, watch that happen. Well, it was, it was a pleasure and anyone feel free to reach out anytime we're here to help and we're here to share anything that we learn and know. Mm -hmm. And you do, again, you get callforce.com. You have a lot of resources there. And in addition to the white paper here, the, yes. the profitable dentist white paper. And I would encourage anybody, it's all free, right? You just, you know, yeah. uh, articles white paper specific things on how to do it. And I think that's the, that's the awesome part about this industry and especially what you do. A lot of people sort of have their secret sauce and they, you know, they won't share it with you. You gotta be a customer. You guys are very good, I think, at saying, um, hey, here's how we do it. You know, there's no magic to it. It's just that we do it the, this way every time. And if you wanna do it yourself, teach yourself, do it. Um, but if you want to pay somebody to do it, do it. And I think that's a, that's a great business model. And I think it makes you a lot of good, solid, long-term customers along the way. It, at some point, somebody does it and says, you know, just let them do it. They do it well. I don't know how the phone rings, but I know I got 50 new patients a month when I had 20 before for my same marketing. So whatever, whatever is happening, those new patients just paid for every bit of somebody answering the phone the right way. And, you know, um, number one, answering it. Number two, answer it the right way. So cool. Corey, uh, appreciate that. We're going to let you get on with your day. And um, practice owners, uh, getcallforce.com, and it's info.getcallforce.com slash TPD. We'll put it in the link below. Uh, I would encourage you to take Corey up on his offer. Doesn't cost you anything. Um, and it basically covers everything we've talked about today. When to answer the phone, how to answer the phone, outbound, uh, you know, the, the three important steps on outbound calling. And, um, you, know, the, um, you know, the worst case is you spend a few minutes reading something that made you a little smarter. And the best case is you say, you know, this can put tens of thousands of dollars a month 
into your practice and do nothing different outside of this than you're already doing. So uh, it's win, win, win all the way around. What did you say? It's yes or yes? Um, yes, yes, or yes. Win, win all the way around. And that's what we're here to do with this. So um, practice owners, uh, uh, this a little longer than most, but I think it was important. I think it's a key time for you to be paying attention to how the phone gets answered and how you're reaching out with a sense of urgency uh, to patients as we sort of restabilize and um, come back stronger. So with that, Corey, see you next time. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.